Hello, bonjour, comment ça va? If it's your first time here to the channel, welcome to you, very nice to meet you, and a big welcome back to all our regular subscribers. Always a pleasure to have you among us. Of course, this is VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality. So as you know, the HP Reverb G2 has started to be sent out to various different people, and now we're starting to really get good unboxing and first impressions by the professionals in the industry. So I did a search on YouTube and found four professional YouTubers, including Upload VR, VR Gamer Dude, VR Flight Sim Guy, and none other than Sebastian Ong from MRTV. So here's what they had to say. To start off with, everyone agreed that they really enjoy the fact that there's an IPD that's continuous and you don't have to put your hands on the lenses to clock it in or clock it out, unlike the Quest 2. And also, as you adjust the IPD, it doesn't reduce the FOV. A USB-C to USB-A converter is provided, as well as a DisplayPort adapter for laptops. So this really shows that HP really want to provide good customer service. Now in terms of the cable, it seems that it's actually very long. It's between 3 and 5 meters, I think. I, sorry, I forgot. I just got a memory blank just now. Um, but anyway, it apparently is very light, so it makes gameplay very easy. And as you could see from MRTV's video when he was using the pre-production, he could actually do some Beat Saber very easily. Now the question is, will we be able to play things like Racket NX or, you know, Beat Saber 360? That's really the question that we're going to have to answer. So do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell because I will be uploading tons of content like this once I receive the HP Reverb G2. So in terms of powering the actual headset itself, you're going to have to plug in a wire inside the adapter that is connected to the headset. So this basically means it's going to create a T-cross, if you wish. Now, I really do wish that we lived in a time where we didn't have to do these things. It'd be just good to, you know, just plug in the headset directly into the PC and then boom, you're done. There's nothing else to do, no extra wires, because this really creates additional things on the floor and things that can get caught up in things. And I mean, I hope that in future headsets, HP can find a way to avoid to power the headset via plugging it into the mains. For the install, Upload VR said it's not as easy as just plugging the VR headset in and then starting to install things. So they do recommend that you read all the manuals and everything that comes with it. However, when we look at VR Gamer Dude's video, he literally just plugged it in and then straight away the mixed reality software starting to install automatically. Now, although we are official channel partners with HP, I'm not going to sugarcoat stuff and I promise I'll always give it to you straight. Now, what's really interesting about VR Gamer Dude's video is first of all, after he did the install, it seemed that he had to reboot his headset quite a lot of times before things actually worked inside. It took him, I mean, he it, it did look like he was getting a little bit frustrated. So I hope perhaps that is Perhaps it's a computer issue, who knows, but he was the only one to have mentioned that in all the other videos. Then the other thing is when he was actually drawing the Guardian, he didn't draw it like we do traditionally with all the other headsets. You have to use your headset to draw your play space. Now, I'm not quite sure whether once you're in, then you can amend it and you can change it manually with your hands or with the trigger or whether you actually have to redo it with the headset itself because if you can't do it manually with your hands, that's going to pose quite a big problem, especially with health and safety. What if there are objects around? I mean, I think he's right when he said in his video that there should be a standard. And I think HP, I hope that they will improve on this uh, if indeed you can't use the controller, as I just mentioned, and you can only use your headset to do it. I do hope that they change this thing and that they improve on that. Now, in terms of the build quality, MRTV was sent a pre-production unit before, so it was really nice to be able to hear his comparison between the before and then the final product that's released to the general market. He said that in general, the build quality is much higher than the pre-production one, and it really is reminiscent of the Valve Index. Now, he showed taking off and putting on the facial interface, and he showed the actual magnets and did, I mean, it did look like those magnets are really, really strong, which is not like the Valve Index as they're actually a bit weaker. So you don't have to worry about the headset coming apart that easily. Apparently, and this is really good news for all of us, the light leaking or God rays as we call them are really, really minimal and you can barely see outside of your nose apparently. So I'm really looking forward to that kind of immersion. In contrast, actually VR Gamer Dude didn't say that it felt very premium whatsoever. He said it felt very plasticky. So this is gonna be very interesting when I receive the headset to really know whether it's premium or whether it feels a bit cheap. Who knows? We're gonna have to wait, so do subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get that feedback from me very soon. 
In terms of weight distribution, well, most of them said it actually, it feels very comfortable and is very light. However, what was really interesting is when VR Flight, same guy said that when he tried it on his girlfriend or his wife, you know, she has a relatively smaller head and they tried to tighten it up as much as possible and it still didn't fit. So it's very possible that it's not gonna be for children, first of all, or anyone who has a, you know, a small head. So if you don't think that you have you know, a normal size or big head kind of thing, then you may want to go to a shop first if you can find one to try it on before you buy. In terms of the microphone, well, it seems to work pretty well. None of the YouTubers complained about the microphone. In fact, they all said it was pretty good and it did sound pretty sharp and pretty crisp. So I'm really looking forward to that because there are other headsets. Unfortunately, they haven't gotten the microphone yet. And do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell because I'll be talking about the Pico Neo 2 and giving you all my feedback after, after one month almost of testing. And unfortunately, the microphone is not there. So it just goes to show that it is quite important to get it right. And of course, we can't talk about the microphone without mentioning the headset speakers. They all say that the sound is absolutely phenomenal. So I'm really looking forward to hear the sound and how it comes out. In terms of people who wear glasses, it seems to be that there's a little bit of conflict there. MRTV Sebastian Ong could not wear his headset with the glasses that he had on whilst he was doing his video. In fact, he really recommends to have very small glasses, whilst VR Gamer Dude had no issue whatsoever. So do be aware of this. Maybe you may want to purchase a couple of pairs, one that's really small, one that isn't, or just take your headset with you to the optician if really you feel that you can't wear it with the specs. Moving on to the battery life, well, as you know, HP will also be providing all the batteries. Personally, apparently you have to wear two batteries per controller. I'm not very happy with that. In fact, I don't see how this saves the planet and make it green, to be honest with you, unless the batteries, of course, are rechargeable, but it doesn't seem that they actually are. So it would really be nice if HP, you know, in future headsets, dish batteries all together and do like what Pico do or DPVR do, just be able to basically plug in some USB-C into the controllers so you could recharge them directly. The battery life, according to VR Flight Sim Guy's channel, however, is that they lost more than 10 hours because so far he said he was playing VR for 10 hours and he didn't get any warnings whatsoever on his headset that he had low battery in the controllers. Now, apparently one thing that they do all agree on as well is the controllers. They all say that they're very premium and feel very well built and very snug in the hands. Now, the size is apparently between the Quest 1 and the Facebook Quest 2. And in terms of the tracking, they said for the VR headset, no issue whatsoever. But if you put your arm out towards your ear about 30, 40 centimeters away from your head, you're gonna have some issues. However, if you leave your arms down and you bring them towards your back, you shouldn't have any issues that much. But you are gonna experience some issues if you bring the controllers to the front of your face close to the actual VR headset itself. According to VR Flight Sim Guy, he says that they're actually a little bit front heavy. So if you have small hands, you might experience that. And of course, there are no sensors. So if you're trying to make any funny gestures in VR chat, for example, you're not gonna be able to. However, he did mention that you can play any game where you can climb and all these kind of things without any issues whatsoever. Apparently, well, according to Sebastian Ong, honestly, he said that he hasn't experienced VR at this level compared to even the Valve Index, he said, is just so much better. So that's gonna be very interesting. Personally, I haven't tried the Valve Index, so I'm not quite sure what it feels like, but according to VR Game Dude, uh, Gamer Dude and also VR Flight Sim Guy, they also agree that the actual experience inside the headset in terms of graphics is really phenomenal. Now, I, when I looked at their video, I have to say I did see some artifacting, especially when it came to the shadows. So I'm not quite sure if they're using, you know, if it's a graphics card or the computer that they're using, um, which by the way, VR Gamer Dude said that if you're using a 1080 Ti graphics card, it's gonna be absolutely fine. And VR Flight Sim Guy was also using the same game, uh, game cards and he said also it would be absolutely fine as well. They all agree that there's barely any screen door effect whatsoever, so the clarity would be really cool. Now, honestly speaking, I when I use the DP VR headset, there is no screen door effect whatsoever, and it's completely amazing, even though it's a free dove headset, and you need to use the Nolo in order to have six dove, but comparing it to the Pico Neo 2, which is a six dove wireless standalone, and there is still some screen door effect, much better than the first Oculus Quest, so much better. But uh, you can still notice it. So it's gonna be very interesting. Do hit the subscribe and notification bell because I'll be able to compare the screen door effect, for example, uh, when taking the Pico Neo 2 
versus the HP Reverb G2. They all say that the colors are very well balanced and the saturation is really well calibrated. You can really see the blacks when they're black and the greens when they're green and you know so on and so forth. And then when they're inside of the home environment, they can really tell that the clouds look so real. They really had a wow moment. So I'm really looking forward to that experience as well. What was interesting, however, is VR Flight Sim Guy when he said that he set the VR headset to half of the resolution he said it's really really bad so if you're thinking of running this headset perhaps on a machine that can't really support the minimum specs or the requirement to really run it properly then you might not actually have the experience that you think you might have so do be aware of that. Guys, I will put a link in the description below of all the YouTubers that appeared on the channel today. I really do hope that you liked the video and remember to hit the bell notification after you subscribe to the channel because once we receive our HP Revo G2, we will start at...